Hey, it's Mike Lipinski. I'm back. Uh, we, we have to get into uh, multi-category tagging, and we're going to utilize the exercise uh, that I had uh, utilized in the last uh, instructional series. Uh, only thing is I should add this caveat. I may get a call from one of my role models, uh, one of my heroes. Now, I may have to cut it short. So in the interim, uh, we're going to plug away, uh, get through this uh, multi-category tagging. Now, you know, you could take things just like that if you're, uh, if you're capable of it <laughs> and if you're licensed to carry those types of things. Again, I, I'm just a fly on the wall, man. So let's, let's get to this. Uh, there's more to this than meets the eye. Tagging. Um, and anybody who's, who knows anything about the New Jersey Division of Fish and Game can appreciate tagging. But in the interim, um, I have to I have to be serious. This isn't a joke. It is, and it isn't all at the same time. So we're, we're talking about annotating and tagging and all those beautiful things that you're able to do with the software platform. <laughs> not in that, not in, in in that vernacular, not in that vernacular. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Uh, but again, folks, you know. This is a frustrating business. People lose fortunes if they make huge mistakes. And who knows how they act out in, when they rage. God forbid they lose everything and they have to uh, suffer some of the uh, unknown comforts, like all those creature comforts that they lose after they go belly up, right? You know, they do all sorts of things when they lose those creature comforts. And then look out. <laughs> if you're anywhere within the close proximity to those folks, you could very well incur their wrath, right? And it's just how, that's just the nature of the beast, man. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. Remember, we have to help these folks that have a difficult time finding solutions for some of these uh, perplexing concepts. All right, so multi-category tag. Now, activate the level one floor plan, which I have open. Hopefully you do. Hopefully you have your coffee, um, depending on where you get yours. It may be fresh or it may not be fresh. It's your preference. In any event, uh, low coffee's good. I, I prefer that brand. Now, uh, it's gonna ask us to go into the family editor again, right? So uh, in the application uh, menu, file, Choose new family. Well, I'm happy with my family. But I don't see any particular reason to choose a new one. But then again, the more the merrier, right? The more the merrier. Everyone makes a choice sometimes to choose other families to interact with, right? Life, life's funny. It's funny. It's funny how the words associate themselves select a new family. Sometimes I want to. And it's not that time yet. Usually the witching hour is a little later in the evening. In any event, I'm sorry. It's just kind of funny. It's tongue in cheek, right? Select a new family. <laughs> Creates a set of custom components to use in projects. This will take you to the default family templates. <clears throat> I feel like I'm standing on line at a nightclub, maybe a little limelight, and there's a velvet rope, and the bouncers are picking families. You get to go in, you don't. You get to go in, you don't. Family selection. Uh, yeah, it's funny. I'm sorry. Sometimes it's hard. It is. It's hard. When, when it is so comical. Architecture can be very, very comical. And, again, hysterical. Hysteresis has a lot to do with this. It can drive you hysterical in lots of different ways. And anyone who knows anything about electrical engineering knows what hysteresis is. I've been trying to tell you what hysteresis is and what it could do when you're up against the wall, under the gun, under too much stress, statics and strengths of materials, you have a breaking point, right? 
Uh, what did Morgan Freeman say in the Shawshank Redemption? Every man has his breaking point, right? And every woman, for that matter. So uh, choosing a new family uh, plays a part in this. And some folks tend to uh, think that's the solution to all their woes. Uh, creating new families or mixing them together. Seeing how they gel. In any event, uh, I, this is not a sociology course. I'm not the division of youth and family services. Uh, I'm something else, right? I'm just that guy with the attitude problem. All right, so multi-category tag. English one, multi-category tag. Boom, it's in this directory tree, right? This branch, this family tree. It's in this family tree. This, this guy with the attitude problem. I'm in this family tree. I'm not changing my name for no one. Doing business as this guy's got a huge attitude problem. Inc. Yeah, so yeah, select it. I'm going off on a tangent. I'm doing it again, and, and I apologize. It's just that it is comical. It's comical. And there you go. You get your uh, crosshairs, and you'll be able to tag things with it. In the family editor, go to the Create tab and select the Label tool. Create. Label tool. Label. Creates a label for the annotation symbol. 50% off at Macy's. <laughs> the label can contain, contain text that does not change, or it can be based on a parameter. So its value can change for each family type or instance. Aw. You shouldn't label a family, right? I, mean, I know we're labeling families, but in, in, in the vernacular, I don't believe you really should label a family. Oh, white trash. Ghetto garbage. You really shouldn't label a family. Unless, of course, uh, they label themselves. Anyway, you could have a label, right? Clothing line, all those things. Line of clothings. You see the label? I got a label right here. Look, I got it at Walmart. I got it at Walmart. It's $8. I, I spent $8 on this shirt. Do I look nice? Do I look aesthetically pleasing? Does it match my eye color? Anyway, yeah, vanity plays into this as well. Vanity is a huge part of architecture. A lot of money. In any event, every emotion, every emotion is going to be uh, tweaked in this uh, instructional video. I'm going to play you like a, a harp. All right, now, in the family edit, go to the Create tab, select the Label Tool, and I click near the intersection of the reference planes. Near the intersection. All right, well, left, right, right, hmm. There's no snap point, right? There's really no snap point, so mm, I'll click it there. And this is where it's going to get really technical. Once the label is placed in the view, the Edit Label dialog box opens, as you can see here. Here, you'll see a list of the parameters that are common across multiple family types. Assembly code, cost, family name, and model, among others. Select manufacturer and cost from the list and click the icon with the green arrow to add them to the label parameters list. So assembly code, cost, and family name. Assembly code, hold down control, cost, right, and family name. As you see, there's a bunch, right? And again, add parameter, you can add other ones. Very, 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 very customizable, remember? Add calculated parameters to label. And this, you, as well as I, have to brush up on, right? We're not scientists. I'm not inside a, a, a manufacturing facility uh, soldering on a breadboard, right, per se. Okay, so add those. Now, I, I am hungry, though. Now, um, 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 professionals shouldn't use um, right? Um is the worst thing you could say as a professional. Um, 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 yeah. We got them all. Yeah, those are the ones that, that they want us to get here. Make sure the manufacturer parameter is above the cost parameter. And it's not. I uh, thought I uh, brought in the uh, 
the right ones. Well, the manufacturer, now let's take a look at this. The assembly code, the cost, or the family name. That's a 60 second uh, rule. Um, let's go with um, the family name would be the manufacturer, I would think, right? I, I don't see that we should be adding manufacturer. It says uh, assembly code, cost, family name, and model, among others. Select manufacturing cost from the list and click the icon with the green arrow. Oh, see, when I would rather talk shop, I uh, make all sorts of mistakes. So we get added manufacturer as well. All right? Ooh. And make sure it's uh, above uh, cost, right? Make sure it's above the cost. All right. Now I'm going to move cost up too. There. I may have entered an extra one. All right. So, uh, yeah. You can do this by selecting manufacturer and then move, uh, and then the move parameter up and down buttons right here. Add a parameters unit format. Good stuff. We can get into units soon enough. Dimensions are coming up. How dimensioned are you through this endeavor? It'll dimension you right out, right out of the box. Now, select the break option in the manufacturer row. And this is going to be an important thing, and you'll see why. Click OK to close the dialog box. Wrap parameters between uh, wrap between parameters is also a very important button, but we'll get into that. Hit apply first. I like to do that by uh, okay. I think I did that right. If I didn't, I'll fix it. It's one of those things. I apologize. It's a mistake. I'll fix it. Sometimes I make mistakes. Well, you make too many, and, 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 and we don't have time. I'm sorry. I, I, I know I made another mistake. We, we can't afford those mistakes. I, I'm sorry. Save the family as manufacturer cost. File. Save as family. Manufacturers. Oops, I spelled it wrong. Manufacturers. Manufacturers cost. Did I spell that right? <laughs> Except that I, I am so far ahead of myself, it doesn't really tell you to save it as the full name. It says just save it as MFR. 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 And that's probably one of those uh, Condoc master format abbreviations. And then click the load into project button in the ribbon. If you have multiple project files open, select the C19 sample building start RVT project file when prompted. We have it open, but I don't want to save it here. This isn't, this, we, you save this uh, where you save the rest of your families, right? And this is a uh, label, it's a tag. So let's put it where it belongs, right? C, program data, autodesk. Revit 2020, Libraries, U.S. Imperial, oops, U.S. Imperial, Annotations, and we can create a new directory, right? We can create a new directory. How would we call this one? One underscore Kobe Tags. How about that? Kobe Tags. Or better yet, I want to change this directory. Kobe, I want to change this to IFC. Kobe tags. IFC Kobe tags, how's that? We'll see if it's that directory. For lack of better direction. Now, load into project. Doesn't say close it, it says load into project. Now, the only project you have open is this one, so we'll load it into it. If you had multiple projects open, or even another family open, it'll give you the option of load it as a nested family within another family, or load it uh, into any one of the projects, and you'll have to pick a checkbox to select which project it loads into. Hopefully, my, uh, my role model doesn't call. Anyway, back in the project file. Switch to the annotate tab in the ribbon. Let me put my finger by the paragraph. 
Ordinarily, I don't read and use my finger to follow along with the words. When I'm going back and forth and back and forth, up and down and down, you, you tend to lose your place. And the more I go off on my little uh, tangents with my storytelling, I, I tend to definitely get perplexed when I look back at the text. I'm fully cognizant of that. So I'm just reading. And if there was a teleprompter right where that light bulb is right there, it'd be a little easier, right? It'd be a little easier. All these uh, folks that uh, man the bully pulpits looking at that teleprompter, it'd be so much easier just to read what your uh, publicist wrote for you to read and try not to deviate from center. But uh, again, they say image is everything. Well, I don't have the luxury of a staff. This group's real small, man. Real small. Our payroll's real, real small. Our cash flow, too. Our cash flow's pretty uh, tiny, too. Uh, but uh, we, have a, we have a lot of passings. So just like Yahoo back in the 90s. <clears throat> All right, in any event, do your homework. So we're back in the annotate tab in the ribbon and locate the tag panel, which we here we have here. And then click the multi-category button. Click one of the chairs in the space name lounge. We got a bunch here. A Viper chair, 950, 963. We've got a, that's not a chair, but we have a, a couch, couch, couch corner. And we've got this other, another Viper chair, and we have this little end table here, this little cocktail table. If I can select it, let me see if I can get over here. We've got a coffee table. Did I say cocktail table? <sighs> Sorry, maybe it's from a 40 and slip. Maybe I need a drink. It is uh, 1 o'clock. Some folks, <laughs> if they don't get one by 1 o'clock, game over. In any event, I'm not one of them. Now, yeah, so... Click any one of the chairs. I'll click this one. And again, we have the, the half-inch leader, right? The half-inch leader. It seems okay, but what if I was to change this to uh, one inch? Right? Tab. Well, now it's a little further away. Doesn't look very good that way. But 0.5 inch. Let's get it back to where it was. Okay, Viper chair. Not too happy that it over. It, it goes over. It masks that dimension line. Not too happy about that. But then again, that's what yellow and red highlighters are for. If you want to spend your day looking at a drawing just with a yellow and highlighter, correcting the errors or the uh, mistakes or the, the aesthetically busy draw or the busy drawings all day, you know, some folks like to do that and just you know rag on their uh, on their employees, throw blood all over their drawings, lack of a better term. <laughs> throwing blood all over the drawings. <laughs> That's an actual industry term. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has heard that before, but I have. So click the chair in the lounge. When the chair is placed, you will see a question mark indicating that this element has no predefined value. Well, that's not the case. In this particular exercise, it does. Uh, and who am I to argue with that? But again, if it wasn't, if the chair didn't have its parameters set, then it wouldn't be able to pull it, right? If we went to the edit chair type, I'm in the lounge, right? Yeah. Well. Hmm. Assembly code E202020. Oh, I didn't get the uh, I didn't get the error message, which is fine with me. Uh, I have no problem with that. When the tag is placed, we see a question mark indicating that this element has no predefined value for either manufacturer or cost. Ah, well, indeed, it doesn't. Absolutely not. It does have the family type, right? We could tell it's a. Well, that's the tag. Let me select the family. Viper Chair 963, family, type, chair. And as you can see, there's a bunch of nice furniture. There's a bunch of furniture in this, in this project. In any event, uh, again, I'm, I'm wasting valuable time. I don't want to lead these folks down a path of nonsense, which in some of my videos I may very well have. I apologize, but... Again, maybe you got some uh, comedic value out of it. For entertainment purposes. I aim to please, I told you. Yeah, so that stinks. We don't have a predefined value for either the manufacturer or course. So press the escape key twice 
or click to modify to exit the tag commands and select the tag you just placed. And then click the question mark. Well, we don't have a question mark. That's the thing. Oh, well, I believe, well, no, no, this is the tag. This is the right tag. I believe I saved it correctly. Okay, well, here's the thing. I'm just one of those guys that I always double check my math. Well, they're in here, manufacturer, cost, assembly, code, family, name. And they're not reporting any of those, but I don't see a question mark. And I believe maybe the question mark would appear if none of the information was derived. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to uh, overthink that for a second. I'll read through the passage. And then click the question mark. Well, I can't. I can't click the question mark. And I don't believe I missed a step. But then again, I could very well have. Uh, the change parameter values dialog box opens. This box is used. This box is used. This dialog box is used only when a tag has multiple parameters assigned to a single label. Otherwise, you would usually be able to type a value directly into the tag. Enter values for both manufacturer and cost, then click OK. You'll get a dialog box stating that you're changing a type parameter that could affect many other elements. Click yes, and then hit click OK to accept that change. Well, they say electricians will find their way around anything, so I could use some advice, but I'm not an electrician, so what I could do is I could go over to here, and I can go into here, and I could take a look at this and see if indeed uh, the type properties of the tag doesn't seem to have any parameters associated with it. Give me a second. Maybe I didn't overwrite. Maybe I didn't overwrite. Hold on a second. You know what? Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Maybe the, maybe, 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 when I loaded it in, I didn't overwrite the existing parameters of the label, right? But that may not be the case. So I've got to troubleshoot this now, right in front of you. Now up against the gun, we gotta get these drawings out by, by 1.30. The client's waiting, and, and the project manager, who's been sitting there all morning talking to someone in his office or her office about nothing other than just entertaining things, is just sitting there waiting for us. And, and they're gonna come out and give us an attitude problem because we told them we'd get it done, but we haven't gotten it done. I mean, they haven't done anything all day other than sit in their office with their, their buddies or their, their friends and talk. <laughs> And, and that's what they've been doing for the last four hours while we've been busting our butts trying to get this done. And then they're going to come out and then they're going to put on this, this you know, that, that, that appearance of authority with their really nice dressed up outfits and their wine cellars and all those things that they brag about. And then they're going to come out and they have that pen, that pen that will give you the layoff check, right? So we're going to be afraid. We're gonna get this free when we have such a sweat. And because we, we know the rent's due and, and the PSC and G's bill is due. And, and here it comes again, the fancy schmancy, uh, uh, fancy schmancy project manager dressed to the nines with our with our pink slip again to tell us that we don't know what we're doing. Because we promised them and we should have, like we, we promised them we'd have the deliverable done and we can't get it done because we've ran into a, a glitch, right? But that they don't care. Well, you said you'd get it done and you didn't get it done. And now, again, I guess that, that's grounds for insubordination. Now, here's the thing. What if they told you when you were supposed to have it done? <laughs> and then they went back in their office and they, and they had you on legacy software, right? And the chief engineers, they had you on legacy software and they quantified your time and how long it would take you. And they went back in the office and ate uh, coffee with their uh, really pretty uh, assistants and talked and laughed and giggled and closed the door then and started talking about everybody else and closed the shades and then opened them back up again just so that no one in the, in the, in the office could hear you, hear them, right? You've seen that before, haven't you? And they come back out after wasting four hours of having fun and then they come out and put the pressure on you. And you go, well, I'm only using AutoCAD LT. I hear you. I bet it's only AutoCAD LT. <laughs> in any event, you know what I mean, man. They said, <laughs> the, the text said I was supposed to, to add <laughs> multi-category tags. Well, it was a Brooks Brothers suit he was wearing. 